I'm Gabriel, Jason's youngest son, and one of the three most important reasons he started to save his family on the block. Today's guest, John Kowalski, is a fire lieutenant and a friend of mine after he congratulated me for quick thinking in an emergency. He's here today to talk about fire safety, fire safety plans, and fire safety equipment. He and my dad got along great because they're both huge safety nerds. There's a lot to learn in here. If you haven't yet, please take a second to like and subscribe to the channel. It helps my dad do more interviews like this one. Please help people like John keep him busy. When he's not busy, he tells dad jokes. I'm not sure how many more I can take. Thank you for watching today. Let's go watch Dad and John geek out. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Safest Family on the Block, where knowledge is power. I'm your host, Jason, and joining us today is John Kowalski. Hello, John. Hello, Jason. Thanks for having me. Uh, pleasure to be here. Thank you. John Kowalski serves as a lieutenant and the public information officer for the Lone Oak Volunteer Fire Department in Signal Mountain, Tennessee. He's a marketing professional by trade and a firefighter with hazmat, wildland, urban interface, and several other certifications. And he also serves as the vice president on the board. This is a man who knows fire <laughs> and the dangers of fire and how we can keep yeah. our families safe from fire. And yeah. Fire safety has always been a bit of a pet peeve of mine uh, in terms of, I ran a martial arts school for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And the number of families who brought their kids in twice a week, sacrificed two or three hours of their evening so that their kids could learn to beat somebody up, which is a vanishingly small situation. Right. But then when we had our week where we talked about fire plants and fire safety, had clearly not given it even three hours in the year of time. And I think fire safety is hugely important for family safety. And I imagine you do too, considering what you do with your spare time. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yes, uh, I, I'm a volunteer um, in, in just general education, um, the fire service in this country, mm -hmm. about 76% are volunteers as opposed to paid. Um, especially, especially out in the rural areas. I'm outside of Chattanooga. Um, the more rural you get, the you know the more the population of volunteers um, comes up. So we do what we can. Um, at my department, it's through Facebook page, through our website. We have a lot of information there. But we also do, um, you know, pre-COVID. Um, we're, we're working around that. Uh, but a lot of public education to neighborhood associations, neighborhood groups. Uh, presentations at our uh, community center, um, all about fire prevention and fire safety, um, because that is a huge, huge thing. Um, you know, the, the first thing, if there's, I just want to get this right off the bat before I go into some other stuff. If there's Excellent. a fire, the most important thing, get out. Don't call 911, get out, get safe, get a a safe distance from your house or structure or wherever you are, then call 911. Make sure everyone's out mm -hmm. first. That's key number one. Um, and, uh, you know, with that, it, it's, um, you know, a, a, a little bit of science behind it. You, you look at fire in general, you really need three things, oxygen, fuel, and heat. And you, you take away any one of those things the fire goes away. Um, you know, that's the, the, the science behind putting water on fire. You're smothering it. You're, get, you're cooling it down. You're removing the heat. Or putting sand on a, a campfire. You're removing the oxygen. Um, so, so those are, you know, some key things that, that I'll get into once we get into some prevention tips and, and tricks, uh, especially outside your home. Um, you know, what to do, what not to do, things like that. Um, Good. And again, I think it bears it, repeating. Stop get me at any out. time. And, yeah. 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 No, so just, I think it yeah. bears repeating. Just, get just out. Get out. No. Yeah. Especially, I think, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, thing. but Don't. we think about fire, right? We think about fire, but it's often the smoke is going to get you. Mm -hmm. So you can look at a small fire that <clears> you think it, it's not that, spreading very fast. I have time to yeah. grab the valuables, but the smoke inhalation gets you. Do you sure. Uh, you probably know off the top. That, 
the the stat on how many people oh, yeah. die in a fire from the smoke versus the actual burning. Um, oh yeah, and you know by far, um, you know it, it's you know 80, 90 percent plus is the smoke. That's what's going to get you, mm-hmm. and it's you know definitely more dangerous than the flames. And what it does, you know, we in the industry call it you know layering that the smoke rises. The more smoke comes in, that ceiling or that, that smoke layer starts pushing down on you. That's why in grade school, you know, stop, drop, and roll. Or, you know, get down to stay low, to stay, that's where the clean oxygen is in a, um, in a fire. Um, you know, the, the flame, you know, the smoke's going to get you well before the flame. Hmm. Um, and, you know, uh, along those lines, too. You look at, you know, we talked briefly about construction a, a little bit before we, you hit record here. Um, that's very important because you look at older home construction versus the newer home construction. Um, not only the construction, but the contents, what's in home. A lot of the older homes, it's natural fibers, natural furniture, um, you know, hardwood, things like that. Uh, if there's a fire, you in an older type home, you have between 14 and 16 minutes to get out before you have a serious problem. With the newer homes, with the the plastics, the varnishes, the chemicals in in your couch, chairs, things like that, it's a lot of plastic. Um, That really reduces that time from six to eight minutes and could even in certain situations be less than three minutes to get out of your house. Um, wow. because of all those petroleum and, and chemicals mm. in, in things. Wow. And that brings us, yeah, I it, think, to the, to the loadout part of this episode, because the things that we need to be able to get out in time start with a smoke detector, correct? Mm-hmm. Yes, you're right. One of these guys here. Yep. A smoke detector, carbon monoxide detector, a lot of them are in, you know, combinations. Um, in, in Tennessee, where I am, our uh, fire marshal's office, they run a program called Get Alarmed, where they supply fire uh, smoke detectors to our the fire departments, and we, we go and install them. If you need one, we'll give them no charge. Um, a lot of companies, a lot of uh, fire departments do that as well. Um, they're cheap, too, at, at your local Lowe's, Ace Hardware, um, you know, any, any of those places. Um, another key thing to have handy too is, um, you know, your just a residential um, smoke uh, fire extinguisher. This this is mine from my home here. It's just a small one. Um, the thing to look for, and this is most standard, is uh, A, B, C, and it'll usually say it on the bottom. And it's class A, B, and C. Class A will take care of and extinguish your trash. Uh, papers and wood materials, B is liquid and gases, and, and C is for energized electronics. Um, kitchen stuff. Um, you know, kitchen and cooking are the number one cause of home fires, um, with heating being the second. Um, but the issue with kitchens, um, grease, something like this, an ABC will not work. Um, you know what happens when you throw, you know, thawing chicken into a, a hot pan of oil? It splatters and steams. You, you don't want to put water. You don't want to put liquid on a kitchen fire. It's, it's grease. You want to smother it. Um, a wet uh, dish towel, something like that to cover it up. Um, I, learned kitchen, from my, yeah, I learned from my grandmother just to keep a, a thing of salt, enough salt. I was going to say, yep. Salt, dump the salt, you're the same thing. You're getting rid of the uh, oxygen. Yeah, I, I once set my kitchen on fire while making sushi. Uh, yeah. Fact that my family makes fun of me forever about well, what it was. It was salt to save the day. It was an yeah. oil fire and boiled over. Yeah. And yeah. as you say, if I had put water on that, if I had used a standard fire extinguisher, it would have spread it and made it explode. But, exactly. you know, gra- grandmas are smart listening to grandmas. And she, they are. They, we always they, kept they, a big thing of salt for that purpose. <laughs> They've been around the block, um, yeah. <laughs> you know. It, you know, it, it's yeah. You know, we we talked about the smoke. Um, another important thing, in addition to the smoke detectors and fire extinguishers, is um, a plan to get out. 
Um, mm -hmm. The best thing to do is to plan from any part of your home, plan two ways out from, uh, you know, a back bathroom. You know, maybe there's a doorway out and a window. You know, those are your two, day, two ways out. Plan it, you know, from anywhere in the home. You know, two ways out. And then also, number three, when you get out, have a meeting place, a designated safe meeting place on the edge of your property or wherever you're safe so you can get everyone accounted for, everyone there, and then call 911. Um, and, and that's something, something that just needs to be practiced. Right. You know, it's not a lot of time, but you, you think of a, a normal, you know, Saturday or today's a Monday, um, you know, do a test fire alarm like, like you do in schools or employers or businesses. Um, run a yep. test, everyone where they are, get out. Yeah. One of um, our earlier guests, uh, George Brick, had yeah. a, has a saying about that, which is a plan you don't practice isn't a plan, it's a wish. It, exactly. Exactly. And that's the biggest thing. If everyone's going to the same designated area, then, you know, you're all on the same page. If, if someone's in the garage versus the kitchen versus the bedroom, you're getting out and you're getting to the same place. But it's always two ways out. Um, another thing, too, that is, is just amazing is amazingly simple. Uh, close the door. Like when you sleep, things like that, uh, just a simple door like, like behind me, um, that will help not only with smoke, but also help contain the fire and slow the fire down from getting where you are to give you time to get out a window or, or wherever you need to. I did not know that. I had a question yeah. about a fire plans yeah, uh, sure. real quick. And that is, so you have a situation as a parent where You've got your 10-year-old who's trained in practice, but there's also an 18-month-old toddler across the hall. My fire plan isn't to go out to my bedroom window. My fire plan is to get to the nursery and out his window. Perfect. Uh, yep. Are there some factors that I should keep in mind when I'm moving that extra space, taking that extra time if, to make sure that I succeed at that mission? Yeah, if, if a door is closed, you know, you, your, your natural instinct is to grab that door handle like this with the palm of your hand. Um, don't do that. You don't feel if it's warm or if it's hot with the back of your hand. And mm -hmm. why you do that, you know, learn that in fire school. If you're feeling something with the back of your hand and it gets burned, you're still able to grab and grip things. Whereas if you have a burn right across here, it's going to be painful to do anything. You just, you know, feel with, and it's, you're a little more sensitive on the back of your hand too. You can feel heat a little bit better, you know, if, if there's calluses and things like mm -hmm. that. Um, so to feel that if, if it's warm, if it's hot, if it's cool, if it, if it feels safe, you know, open it, give it, give it a little nudge and, you know, get over there and get the infant. Mm -hmm. And again, probably stay down if possible. Absolutely. And, but, you know, too, if, if that, if that's, hot, you know, get out your bedroom win window, wait for the fire service. My child's in that window. They'll get in there really fast. Yeah. You know, I'll have to, gonna... I have to tell on myself a little bit. And I, I've shared this story once before on the, on the, on the show, but yeah. this fire extinguisher used to live in the hallway between the master bedroom and our youngest child's room. And I was thinking, well, that way, if there is some fire, I could hit that and get out of there. Mm -hmm. But then it occurred to me, what if the hallway is on fire? Yep. So now it lives in the master bedroom. <laughs> yep. Yep. And, you know, an important part of this, not everybody, you know, you pull, you pull the tab out, which I lost it somewhere. You, you pull the tab mm -hmm. and you squeeze. And, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's not only squeezing, you're aiming it, but you want to rotate it you know, do a, a sweep, you know, ch chemicals will go out of there. You want to kind of blanket the area so it, it smothers the flames, smothers the fire. So keep that and what's mind. the acronym? There's oh, an pass. acronym they use for that. Right. And the last uh, one is sweep. Uh, yeah. Pull, aim, squeeze, and then sweep. Exactly. Uh, in our family, what we do is we buy, you know, these are a two pack for 25 bucks. Yeah. And, and we, we replace them every year. And just before, just before the 4th of July, 
and we use the yep. old one so everybody in the family gets a chance to practice on a campfire once. Yeah, perfect. That's a great way to, to get used because unless you use one, you don't know how they feel. You don't know really mm -hmm. what's going to happen and, unless you do. So that, that's mm -hmm. a great way. Um, and you mentioned replacing it every year. That's mm -hmm. excellent. Um, same. Every month, mm -hmm. you should be checking the batteries of these things. Mm -hmm. Just push the test. Um, and then usually twice a year, it doesn't hurt to change nine volt batteries, um, you know, do, do the trick. And, you know, usually it's Labor Day and Memorial Day, you know, mm -hmm. switch the batteries and all the smoke detectors. Yeah, out here we do it on a fall back and spring forward day. Yep. Ah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> as long Same as, thing. as, yeah. And it doesn't really matter. It could be your birthday and your spouse's birthday if they're separated yeah. by six months. Yep. But whatever, exactly. just as long as it's twice a year. Yep, and the, yeah. these should mm -hmm. be placed in each of the, the bedrooms as well as mm -hmm. outside the bedroom, kitchen, a living area, you know, mm -hmm. anywhere, um, you know, that could potentially be a problem or you would want mm -hmm. um, to be alerted. And, you know, don't, don't put them low. They need to be high back mm -hmm. to that smoke rising thing. Mm -hmm. you know, and I think that's especially important in houses that have a vaulted ceiling. It yeah. may be a pain in the ass, right? Where you have to go get the extension ladder from the garage to, but yep. is the, is, am I correct in thinking the highest point in the home should probably yep. have at least have one of your things there? Yep, absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Because I mean, if not, if that smoke can be, you know, especially if you, if you have a big vaulted ceiling, it could be mm -hmm. eight, 10 feet of smoke before you even know. And by that time, it, you know, it might be too late to save any part of the structure or to mm. even get out safely. You know, that's mm. the number one thing. Get out safely. Be safe. You know, don't worry about your computer. Don't worry about your, you know, purse. Um, just get out. Mm. You know, all that stuff can be replaced. Outstanding. So yeah. I want to talk a little more about uh, smoke detectors. We, you know, we're, we're all familiar with the concept. Yep. And one of the things I like to do on these equipment episodes is find out what are the ways that we are doing this wrong mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that you've seen and how can we correct that um they're they're annoying they go off every time i burn toast so let's disconnect it let's pull the battery out okay well that's that's not going to help you is you know or it's a dead battery or it's just old you know these things have a lifespan mm -hmm. of like 10 years you know the ones on the market do now um, they'll last 10 years and then get rid of them, um, you know, on, you know, date of install, you know, mm. they all have a sticker right there, you know, put the date you install, put it in your, the calendar of your phone, you know, little things like that, using technology to remind yourself every, you know, six months, let's chain the batteries every month, let's, let's run the test, push that button, you know, sound it off, make sure the kids are safe and they know what that sound is and they know what to do. And it's not, you know, run around crazy, you know, what's going on. Mm -hmm. It's all right, let's remain calm. Let's do exactly what we practice. You know, let's get out of the house. Mm -hmm. if, if it's something coming from the kitchen, maybe there's a back door or a front door, or, you know, remain calm, but move. Mm -hmm. Move swiftly, swiftly with focus. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, now, uh, carbon monoxide detectors. So, not mm -hmm. yeah, carbon monoxide. I keep saying carbon yeah. dioxide, and yeah. that my lungs yeah. are a good enough carbon <laughs> dioxide detector. But yes. not everybody knows what these are and why they're why they're important. Even though yeah. they've been becoming more and more common in the last ten years, could you could you speak to what these are, what they do, and yeah, um, they'll detect you know carbon monoxide in your home, and a lot of times that'll come from a, a gas furnace. Or, or an oil furnace, um, you know, something burning. If if they're omitting a, you know, or off gassing, you know, something mm -hmm. they shouldn't. Or if, um, you know, if, if if you try grilling in the house, <laughs> you know, that don't ask. Uh, it, you know, stuff like that. You know, you need to vent the stuff properly. And sometimes, you know, ventilations break. There's issues, but that's why you have that carbon monoxide detector. If you, if that goes off, you know, again, you may not see it, you may not feel it, but get out, you know, um, get to fresh air. Um, you may be experiencing a headache or even some dizziness. 
Um, if it goes too long, you may be, you know, uh, uh, experiencing some vomiting. Um, but, you know, usually headaches and dizziness are the first thing with carbon monoxide poisoning. Um, and, you know, get out, get some fresh air, get some deep breaths in, call 911. Don't hesitate. Call 911. Ambulance or fire department will be there with oxygen. They will test your levels. They'll make sure you're okay. And then, you know, in, in the fire departments, we have these things called gas monitors. Uh, we'll go in and find that problem. If it's a hot water heater, if it's a furnace, if, you know, where it's coming from, we'll test all the oxygen everywhere. Um, we, we love using our toys and gadgets, um, mm -hmm. you know, and it, and it, you know, we'll clear it before anyone's allowed back in the the home, um, you know, just to make sure it's safe for everyone. Yeah, and folks, call early and often. You know, the worst yeah. case scenario of thinking there's a problem and not calling the guys yeah. up to use their toys is that you're a little bit embarrassed. It, it doesn't, <laughs> right? it, you know what? Who cares? Be safe. I, I remember one mm -hmm. call, you know, actually, you know, one of my neighbors, a half a mile up the road here, it was a new construction site, um, gorgeous new home. And um, I, I forget, it was like an early morning, like a 5 a.m. There, one of their smoke detectors was going off. <laughs> Didn't know what it was. And you know, I remember that morning, it was cold and it was pouring rain, but they were out of the house. They were in their car. They were waiting. I was the first one there. And yep, everyone's safe. I did the, uh, you know, walked around the perimeter. I saw no smoke, I saw no fire, but couldn't get that off. So then we went in with the, you know, the oxygen monitors and also a um, thermal imaging camera that looks for hot spots. And I was crawling up in the, in the attic and it turns out they had a leak in their roof that was causing water to drip on the top of the ceiling that was going through the drywall and shorting one of these out. Oh, but you know what? They were safe. We made mm -hmm. sure all their appliances, you know, the, the water heater wasn't, you know, emitting any carbon monoxide. Everything was safe. So it's like, well, we, we found the problem. We cut it, pulled it out of the wall. Call your contractor. You're, you're safe to go in. And we Absolutely. would rather do that a hundred times than to have um, something happen to one of our neighbors, friends, or community members. Absolutely. Call us. That's that's why we're here. We we're yeah. we're whether we're paid or volunteer, um, we're in it to help and to serve the community. So do not hesitate. Not at all. Nine one one, that magic number. Mm -hmm. Make sure your kids know how to do that too. Mm -hmm. um, there, there's been instances where you know kids have totally helped out. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, yeah, uh, folks. Uh, not all of our viewers know that John and I met when I had posted about uh, my ten year old saving the day when there was a problem with the communications, and yeah. he was kind enough to send a little congratulations letter that. Uh, my boy is very proud of and is currently selecting good. frames for. Oh, uh, he's, good. Yeah, he's, he's very excited. And so on, moving on with our equipment, here's our fire extinguishers. Yeah. We've talked about it again already, yeah. but how do people screw up using these? And what can we do to be better at it? They, they panic. They don't know what to do. They, they start squeezing because you're not thinking clearly. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't practiced it, Grab, squeeze. Well, you know, there's a pin in there, you know, that you have mm -hmm. to pull out for it to physically, mm -hmm. you know, open that valve and squeeze. You know, another thing is, well, don't, you know, be looking up. Don't, you know, pull it before you squeeze. Make sure you're aiming at the fire or where you want the, mm -hmm. you know, the chemicals to spray. And, you know, and that's that sweeping motion. That, that, that's key too. That will help. The, the faster you can sweep, the better um, it will be. But I mean, it, it, it's, it's a risk. If it's something small, if it's something you think you can put out, try it, but do it from a safe distance. These will usually feet, or, uh, shoot six feet at least. Um, if it's something where you don't think is going to be safe or you don't think you can do it, get out. 
just don't think, get out. You know, that, that's, you know, buildings, furniture, things like that can be replaced. Today's episode is brought to you by Corobia Martial Arts Supply. If you're a serious martial artist and you're tired of paying premium prices for high-end Japanese gear, Corobia has your back. Corobia was founded by a black belt expat for black belts worldwide. They carry a full range of geese from Hirota, Tokaido, and Tokyo Do International, as well as bags and books and other training supplies. They made my third Don black belt back in 2002, the one I still wear to this day, and they've only gotten better since then. Use coupon code SAFEFAM to get 10% off your first order at Corobia.com. They're a good company run by good people that offers good products at good value. Please do check them out. That's Corobia.com. K-U-R-O-O-B-I-Y-A.com. Tell them safest family on the block sent you. I've heard that feedback uh, in an episode where we were doing uh, car emergency supplies about a fire extinguisher in the car, and that maybe yeah. one of the biggest mistakes people make with fire extinguishers is using them when what we should be doing is escaping. Exactly. Exactly. You may need this to create a pathway to that door to get out. Um, that they'll, you'll run through this a lot faster than you think. Um, don't, don't mess around with it. Get out. Stay safe. That, that's, that's the key. Um, you know, kit, kitchen safety and, and cooking, you know, you, you talked about your, your sushi incident and, you know, just a, cu- a couple tips there, you know, mm-hmm. stay in the kitchen. If you are, you know, frying, broiling, boiling, you know, anything there, even if something's on the stove, if that stove's on, be there because it only takes a second. You know, turn your handles in so someone walking by doesn't knock something off. You know, burn skulls, that, that's another, you know, dangerous thing. And, and, and those are no fun, um, you know, and, and keep things that can burn. If you have a gas stove, don't put your dish towel right next to the stove, you know, that could ignite oh. Now, one of our earliest episodes was with uh, Justin Shore, who runs the paramedics at San Francisco International. And sure. he said that in his career, the most common cause of burns was coffee and tea mm-hmm. for children. Yep. And so being aware oh, yeah. of that heat, even when it's not fire. Exactly. And, you know, for small children, bath too. Scalding mm-hmm. is an issue. Make sure it's, it's the right temperature, just like using a, a bottle on the, the underside of your wrist, you know, put your mm-hmm. wrist under that tap water and make, and be there while it's filling. Never leave a child unattended and make sure they don't play with the knob and crank it all the way to the hot. You know, that's, you know, going to be an un- unpleasant incident also. Um, so it, it's a lot of common sense. It's a lot of, you know, thinking about this before an emergency and planning and going through the steps just in case, you know, hope you never have to, you know, really get out of your home. But you know, practice once, twice a year, you know, make sure everybody knows that, um, you know, and, you know, going outside, you know, depending on where you are in the country and what the wildland situation is, if you're um, susceptible to fires, a lot of dry areas, California, um, Oregon, Nevada, you know, all of those areas, um, and, you know, even in Tennessee, we've had, you know, that's when I actually joined uh, the volunteer fire department here. I've had no experience, you know, until I moved here. And that was after the 2016 fires up in Gatlinburg. And, you know, I, I live in a wooded area and, you know, I want to do what I can to, to help the community and, and help, you know, protect the community as well as protect my family and my home here too. Um, so a couple little things that you can do, you know, make sure your gutters are cleaned out. You know, those dry leaves, you know, those, those are a perfect thing to ignite from, you know, any, you know, flying embers. Um, you know, uh, if there's a, a forest fire, embers can literally, you know, sail in the wind up to a mile. And if they land in your gutters, that could ignite that, and, and then you have a, an issue on your hands. Um, and they, and they say create a, a, 
30 to 100 foot perimeter around your home, a, a safe area. And that's meaning, you know, remove dry leaves, remove twigs, remove anything that can catch fire. Um, if, if there is, uh, you know, a, a tree with branches going into your power lines, call the power company. They'll come out and trim that. They'll make sure those power lines are safe. Um, you know, also with, with chimneys, um, you know, 15 feet around a stovepipe or a chimney, keep that clear of any, any trees, branches, things like that. Um, you know, don't stack wood against your home, stack it away. Uh, mow your grass regularly, you know, and make sure your chimneys are inspected. Um, things like this. And, you know, when it comes to wildland fires, it, it's really the behavior is based on the type of fuel, you know, what's on the ground. Is it high needles? Is it leaves? Is it big stumps? They're going to take longer to get going, but they're going to burn longer. Um, what's the weather like? Is it high humidity or no humidity? You know, the amount of humidity in the air, the moisture in the air will impact whether something's going to burn, you know, fast or slow or, or not burn. And then also the topography. If you're on the top of a hill, that, that fire is going to go up, you know, um, whereas if you're, you know, down in the bottom and fire hits here, it, it's going to move away from you. Um, hmm. Things to think about there. Um, you know, just yeah. a simple tip that we use if, if there's a wildland fire, you know, get out your shovels and rakes. And we, we call it a fire break, where you basically put a line of dirt between the fire and you or where you want it mm -hmm. to stop burning. The fire has nothing. You're removing the fuel. Um, and, and that fire break should be, mm -hmm. you know, four feet, if possible, down to the dirt. You know, dig in, create a, a ring of dirt. The fire will just get to that point and smother out. And just four feet will do that? Yep, four, wow. four feet wide, four feet wide, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So basically so, a moat. It, you're, you're, ma you're making a dirt moat, yeah. <laughs> if, if you're removing the grass, the pine needles, the leaves, it has mm -hmm. nothing to burn, it's gonna go out. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll do a lot of uh, this in the field. If, if there's a, um, a wildland fire, mm -hmm. we'll make a fire break and just let it burn itself out inside. Wow, I've, and that's really good information because, you know, Forest fires are bigger, older, and meaner than us, yeah. and can seem like something that we're utterly helpless in front of. And of course, when it gets big enough, it's time to go to the next oh, town yeah. over. But yep. those small things we can do as it's not quite on us can be very helpful, I think. Exactly. Even if, it's, if, if you have time, if you have not been evacuated, get your garden hose, start spraying your roof. Spray the walls of your home, wet everything down, you know, the, the wetter it is, the, the longer it's going to take for that fire to dry out and ignite it. Um, you know, outside with backyard campfires, you know, make sure they are 100% out. That's a huge, huge issue. If you see it smoking, if you see glowing embers, don't go in your tent and go to sleep. Get your shovel, dump sand on it put it 100% out, then you do not have to worry about any issues. Um, you know, that, that's what caused the uh, fires out here. And yeah. it's devastating some unattended, um, you know, campfires. And that gets back to so many of the things you're saying is know, know what you're doing and then go do it. And knowing how to put out a fire properly is a skill. I think it's, you don't really learn it uh, in a lot of places, unless you happen to be out there camping with somebody who already knows. It, exactly. And even, you know, fall, especially um, burning leaves mm -hmm. in your backyard, don't make this monster pile and light it. If mm -hmm. that wind picks up, that could be some serious issues. Make them manageable piles. Keep a rake, keep a shovel, keep your garden hose handy. If it gets out of hand, you know, take care of it. Uh, you know, we were um, just a, a quick story. One of my first fires was a wildland fire. It was, uh, you know, uh, a son in his mid thirties and his father, they were out just raking and, and burning some leaves. 
the wind picked up, it got out of hand. Next thing you know, they, four acres of their forest was gone. Wow. It, it, See also wind, deciding to burn your uh, Christmas tree in January. Yeah. Yeah, don't. Yeah, that, well, that's another good thing. There's, there's a lot of do a YouTube search on mm -hmm. uh, dry Christmas trees or dry, you know, dry tree burning. Mm -hmm. That stuff is will go up like that. So that's why, you know, around holiday time, keep it watered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's your, there's your holiday tip for you know, 11 <laughs> months from now. <laughs> yeah. Now, John, you were kind enough to provide an outline for this whole for this whole conversation, and I noticed yeah. that we haven't yet. You talked about electrical smarts. Mm -hmm. Yep, electrical. Um, you know that that can be dangerous. Extension cords are only supposed to be used for temporary use. I know we, you know, everyone does it, but you shouldn't. It doesn't mean it's right. You know, elect extension cords are for temporary use. Um, also, if you have a cord that's frayed or broken, don't use it, replace it. That is a fire hazard. Um, portable heaters, it, it's January here, things are getting cold. Um, don't use an extension cord for a portable heater. Plug it right into the outlet and make sure it has you know, safety mechanism. It, will it turn off if it gets knocked over? Um, if, if, you know, things like that, make sure it's safe and, and just don't leave it unattended. You know, if you're, you have it in your home office to warm you while you work, you know, unplug it, turn it off when you leave. Now, you is know? this, is this important enough that it might be a smart that in most homes, we know which outlet we're going to put the space heater in each year. Would it be smart to go ahead and replace that with a GFCI or is that, that overkill? No, it, it wouldn't hurt to replace that. You know, mm -hmm. the, the safer you can be, um, you know, you, you just don't want to, um, you know, cause anything. The, the most, uh, I guess the, the biggest thing, you know, with electrical, uh, it's your coffee maker, your microwave, and a portable heater. Those are the mm -hmm. three biggies that, that cause most uh, issues and, and problems here. Hmm. Huh. Tell me a little more about the, the microwaves. That one surprises me. It, how, how, do, how do those cause fires and what can we do? Um, broken cord in the back. You, mm. you know, it's jammed up against the, the counter and that, that cord is just bent and it, it'll get frayed after time. Make, make sure you pull it away. Make sure you have enough room and you're, you're not really bending that cable. Oh. Okay. You know, it, it, it's just, you know, it, it, if if one thing I like to say too, if, if you're doing your smoke detector battery change twice a year, why not just take a look at all of your lamps, your mm -hmm. microwave, everything plugged in, just look at the cord. Is it frame? Has, you know, your dog chewed on it? it you know, mm -hmm. that's a real simple thing to get in the habit and, you know, Put it in, you know, as a reminder in your phone or in, in a calendar or whatever you use so you don't have to think, oh, it's the second Saturday of every March or you know, whenever you do that, you know, go around. It, it'll take you 10 minutes and it might save your family. It might save your home, it might save your, your belongings, you know, um, your, your valuable uh, photo albums, things like that that can't be replaced. Wow. So that's that's smart. Yeah, this it, idea of just, a safety calendar, just putting it on the phone. Yeah. Hey, Siri, remind me to check my cords on on my birthday. Yeah. Exactly. It, it's mm -hmm. really simple. And, you know, you, you have a, a fire day, you know, mm -hmm. twice a year, you know, for a half hour maximum. Well, let's make sure everyone knows how to get out in different areas of the, of the, the house. Let's no, make sure everyone, including, you know, a, a small child knows how to dial 911. Mm -hmm. um, make sure you have those two ways out. Make sure you have a, a safe designated area outside of the home, a safe spot that everyone can meet. Um, check your cords, you know, change your batteries, you know, make sure this isn't expired. Um, mm -hmm. I, I really love your idea of replacing it and then the older ones Let's test it out outside. It gives everybody a feel of what it really feels like to, to pull that nozzle. 
And also, not for nothing, your kid loves it. Oh, yeah. Anybody under 12 twelve thinks it's the best thing they've ever done. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. And you know, we have you know also you know talk to your local fire mm -hmm. department wherever you are. Um, you know, most of them, if not all of them, have fire prevention. Um, you know, materials. They give presentations. They can give you brochures, things like that. Talk mm -hmm. to them. Get to know them. You know. Usually, um, they'll be training, like volunteer organizations, they'll usually train at least once a week, find out what day of the week they train, go up there, bring your kids, meet the firefighter, meet the chief, you know, we love it, showing, you know, hey, let's get in the truck, you want to turn on the lights, hit that button, you want to turn on, you know, we love, it because you think about it, and in an emergency situation, um, you know, we're going to be in our turnout gear with a helmet on, with a face mask on, with an air pack on. That's, you know, standard operating for going in anywhere there's uh, um, smoke or, um, you know, a dangerous situation, a car fire, or anything like that. We'll be suited up. We, we look like this big hulking mask. So get your kids used to it. Let, you know, see the the firefighters in their um gear watch them put it on you know let the kids put it on you know it can be very you know intimidating you know here's my helmet here you know and it, it's they can feel how heavy this is and, and what it is and they can wear it and take pictures we always do that at community events too is you know let's you know put it on you know hi i'm john but it, you know you know, 80 pounds heavier wearing all that stuff, but I'm still John underneath. You shouldn't ever be scared if I'm coming in to get you, you know, don't be scared. Don't run away. Don't hide under the bed. Don't hide from us. We are there to help. Just like the police, just like uh, EMTs and, and ambulance, you know, personnel, mm -hmm. you know, so get used to these, mm -hmm. these funny things and, you know, these mm -hmm. big helmets and big boots and stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and get getting them used to it. I'd never thought of it that way, but absolutely, kids have this kind of theoretical yeah. appreciation of firefighters. But when you're already panicked in the middle of a fire, I could imagine a fire, the the full uniform yeah. jumping in there, breathing like Darth Vader does. It, exactly, uh, could be spooky. It, it is. So you know, visit your local fire department. You know, ask to see the equipment. Firefighters love showing their equipment. We will get it on for you. You know, we practice that a billion times anyway every training. Mm -hmm. But you know, sit in the trucks. The more they're comfortable around us as, as people in the safety equipment, the more they're um, going to be comfortable if they need us or if if, the, if we're on site to help them with something. Excellent. Yeah. something uh, to do you know take yeah. that fire day go visit your fire station and just talk, just talk mm -hmm. to who's ever there you know they'll they'll help you and explain things so. excellent so there was one piece of equipment we haven't mentioned yet and i don't have one because i live in a, on a one-story ranch style uh, but fire ladders uh, could you yeah. talk a bit about those and uh how you can tell a they, good one for a bad one you know, we growing up, we had, we had a two story too, and we always kept a fire ladder under uh, my mom and dad's bed. You know, that one that you just hook over the edge of the, the windowsill and it just mm -hmm. rolls right on out. Those are great. You know, you got to think of, of in terms like that if you're on a second story or if, if you're higher mm -hmm. up there, um, you may not be able to get down the stairs. So look at that, you know, they, there's great ones. Um, you can get them at, you know, Lowe's, Home Depot, any of those places that, or Amazon. Um, just a simple one that, you know, tucks away is somewhere handy, you know, and if you need it, you know, out the door mm -hmm. you go. And it, it's, you know, that that's something too, you might want to practice on a lower level, uh, but in, in an emergency, you know, that, could make it a huge, huge difference and in getting out and getting you and your family safe. 
Do you have any advice, again, for the family with the younger child, the toddler, who you're going to have to carry down the ladder? Mm -hmm. Climbing down a chain or rope ladder with just one hand is tricky. Are there techniques? It is, um, you know, it's get, getting that child between yourself and the ladder. Number one, you know, having them just hold on to you as tight as possible so you can kind of, you know, do two hands, one hand if, if you need to. And it's um, just go slowly. Be calm. One step at a time. If, if you try and go hurt, you know, fast, if you try and hurry, you're going to end up missing a step. You're not going to get your footing on that next thing and, and you may fall. Um, so it's just calm, collective, you know, one step at a time. No less and it seems to me, it seems to me as an, just as a pure amateur, once you're on the ladder, yep. the chances of the fire hurting you even if you're moving kind of slow, are pretty slim. The smoke's going to go up and out. The fire is going to rise. Yep. The structural yep. support is going to take so long for that to burn through that you can afford to take your time in those last moments. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, the fire is going to go out and, and look for the openings. A window may be one. And smoke's pouring out mm -hmm. that, you know, that window, if there's a, a hole in the roof, you know, that's where the smoke and, and the flames are going. Um, that, that's what we call ventilation. You know, if we have um, a structure that's on fire, we'll assess, all right, do we need to ventilate? Do we need to get on the roof and cut a hole in the roof to draw that smoke and those flames away from living areas mm -hmm. where we uh, may know there, there, you know, could be residents still trapped. You know, so mm -hmm. the, the smoke, the flames, they're always going to go out the window or any any way possible. So you're you're absolutely right. Going down the side of the ladder, you're going away from the smoke, away from the flames. Just just take your time. It won't take you that long to get down. You know, from a second story. And if you're going, if you don't go down slow, you might end up going down much faster than you had wanted to. It, it, exactly, exactly. And you know, just mm -hmm. have that child hold around your neck. Um, another technique is to almost cradle them. You know, mm -hmm. have them, you know, th their bottom in, in between your arms here as you're going down, mm -hmm. you know, that, that's okay. another, another, another thought too. It's really smart. Not something I'll need at my house. Our house is porous and one story, but yeah. that th those little nightmare scenarios where you got the little kid and you're on the yeah. second floor and you can't get down. It's good to know that there's, there's a yep. way to do that. Yep. Exactly. And, and if, you, if you can't get down, um, fire department's coming. If, if someone called 911, a neighbor, yourself, if you're on a, a two-story wait, we'll come get you. Stay low, shut your door. If you have um, a bathroom attached or something, get, get a, a bath towel. Soak it um, from the bathtub or the shower or a sink. Stick it under the door. You know, mm. keep that smoke away from you and, and just stay calm, stay by that window. And, you know, if you see anyone out there, you wave, you pound it, you knock, you know, open that window, yell as loud as you can, you know, so people will know that, oh, th there they are. Let's get them. You know, there's ladders on all of our trucks and, and every other department too that can reach the second story really fast. We can get it off that truck, get it up there. We'll come get you. Okay. So one last question about that. So I'm in that situation. I'm on the second floor. I don't have a ladder. I've put the towel under the door. And hopefully help comes in time. There is a point where it is better to jump and break a leg than to stay in that room. Yeah. What is that point? What's, what's like the, the point where I should decide to act now? It's, it's, it's tough to say. It's, um, I mean, if, if the smoke's in there, if you're getting pushed down on your belly on the floor just to breathe, um, you know, get out. You know, you can eat, but even something like that, take a, um, a chair, if you can, you know, open a window or even break a window safely. You know, the glass is gonna be an issue. You're gonna get cut, 
but if you can bl break a window to give that smoke a, a, a way to um, you know ventilate and, and get out of there, that will help. That will help. Um, but you know that I'm not going to make any recommendations here. But <laughs> you know you you got to do what you got to do. If you need to hang mm. from that windowsill and, and drop 12 feet, yeah, you're you're going to break something, but it can be fixed. Mm. Okay. So, John, I really want to appreciate you for taking the time today. And before we go, you're the you're the public information officer for your fire department, which yes, means sir. this is not the first interview or presentation you've ever given in your life. No, nope. uh, I imagine you've done a lot of Q and A's. Is there a question you ask you wish people would ask you more often? Um, you know, how how do I keep my home safe? And that. I, I was pleased when you when you asked me to join you here today. Um, everything we talked about, from you know having working smoke detectors, having a small fire extinguisher, having two ways out, you know, planning, thinking ahead, you know, getting to know it so you don't have to think. So mm -hmm. in the middle of the night. When that smoke detector is going off, you don't know what's going on or where it's coming from, just get out of the house and go to that designated meeting point. I think it just takes a little bit of effort and a little bit of planning, uh, but it, it can really make a huge, huge difference um, in, in a case of an emergency. Excellent. Well, so plan thank ahead. you again, John. <laughs> plan ahead, practice, think about it. Thank you oh. so much, John. And thank you everybody for joining us today. We'll find some links that John's provided down in the show notes and everybody stay safe. We'll see you next time. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Thank you for watching today. I hope you found something useful or maybe even inspiring. If you liked what you saw, please take a few minutes to subscribe, like, and comment. Those little things add up to big help for the channel. If you loved it, consider checking out our Facebook page for more family safety news and information. And think about supporting us on Patreon, where you'll get early access, monthly training resources, blooper footage, and other exclusive benefits. You'll find links to both in the show notes. Most of all, thank you for being part of the Safest Family on the Block team. Stay safe, everybody. See you next time.